Hey everyone, it's Fine Man Education again, back with economics, and today we are going to have a quick review of rational decision making in A Levels Economics Year One. It is from Unit One, and it is a pretty important topic because essay questions come up very frequently from this topic and the structure of the essay question always remains the same so if you know how to write one you'll know how to write every other essay questions related to this because only the extracts change and the idea behind it remains just the same so uh for starters let's quickly review what it is so rational decision making or rationality of a consumer refers to the assumption that consumers will act to maximize their welfare or their utility so we assume that consumers will do whatever it whatever necessary which will maximize their own social welfare or own social benefit that is the assumption that we go with so for a quick review we will we uh, we say that according to the theories consumers just like consumers maximize their benefits through their decisions workers also maximize their benefits or they behave rationally by trying to maximize their gains from their employees they try to maximize their welfare at work similarly firms we all know they only have one motive which is profit maximization so they try to maximize their welfare by profit maximization Lastly, governments. The role of governments is to make sure that social benefits are maximized and that citizens are living a good life, welfare of the citizens. So governments try to maximize welfare of its citizens. We are mostly asked about consumers, so we will keep that in mind. Uh, the next part of this topic covers why consumers may not behave rationally even if this is the assumption that consumers uh, behave rationally which means consumers try to maximize their benefit or welfare or utility why are what are some of the reasons that are behind consumers not maximizing their utility so the next part talks about why consumers may behave irrationally that is do not maximize their benefits so this is pretty easy uh think about yourself you might not want to do something because you your best friend or your siblings or your parents are not very inclined to do that so the influence of other people on our behavior is a pretty big thing so that is our first reason influence of other people's behavior so if a very clo close person to you does not behave in a certain way or if uh, for example you do not need to buy a playstation but you see your best friend has bought a playstation and even though you do not need it because your best friend has bought it and he keeps on talking about it to you you feel the urge to buy that playstation even though it is not in your best interest to buy that playstation so you go about and nag about buying it even though you don't need it so in that case you are behaving irrationally you are not maximizing your own social benefit or private benefit that's how other people's influence and other people's behavior have an influence on our own behavior and make us behave irrationally. The second reason is habits. So we may be so habituated to something that we do not want to change our habits from that particular thing and that leads us to behaving irrationally because we are so stuck up on our habitual behavior that we do not want to get away from it. One important point from here is the concept of inertia so this means that inertia means that i know that i am not behaving rationally i know that i am not maximizing my utility but i do not have the energy or i do not feel like changing my behavior i do not want to give that effort to it so that is what inertia means
that again is behaving irrationally the third and the last point is weakness at computation this means that the consumer is not um, able enough to compute the amount of welfare that they are going to gain by behaving rationally so they are not aware of the amount the monetary or the quantitative amount that they are going to receive as a benefit if they change their behavior so they are weak at computing their benefit and therefore they behave irrationally which is pretty simple and straightforward and this is basically it for this chapter it seems like a lot it sometimes it confuses people but it's not really that confusing so um let's move on since we had a quick review of this chapter let's quickly talk about the essay question so oftentimes they give you an essay question with a very short like two-liner statements that oh so um maybe consumers uh so one very um common one that i came across is that um 50 percent of power uh 50 percent of gas and electricity consumers in the uk never switched energy suppliers even though it if they did switch they could save up to 200 or 300 pounds per year so this is what they do they give you a situation where if consumers do switch if consumers do switch uh suppliers they would gain a certain amount as their advantage or benefit but they don't so this is the scenario that they give you and the question 20 marks essay is that evaluate why consumers behave irrationally that's like the generic thing or it can be related to the extract why consumers just like i said they do not switch suppliers do not switch suppliers So this is a typical essay question from irrational decision making and it is literally whatever we discussed over here literally the same points so let's go with the let's go with the assumption that we made of this extract small two liners being given to us that if they did switch suppliers they would um save up to two hundred dollars but they don't switch suppliers and why do they not switch suppliers if that is the case so we will just like any other essay question start with uh, rational consumers and irrational consumers we will define rationality and irrational customers consumers This will get us to marks and then we will start analyzing why they might not behave rationally so four points are enough so we could firstly say that the influence of other people's behavior that's the first point so um the first four points are influence of others behavior so my neighbor might not be switching supplier my sister might not be switching supplier and i feel like switching might not be the best thing to do so i continue to buy from the same supplier even though it i am at a net loss because of that behavior so that gains us one point and then the second point is that um habit we are so habituated to the current supplier the gas supplier or whatever so we are so habituated to the supplier that we do not want to switch our suppliers and because of that habit we are stuck with the supplier and that gets us to our irrational decision making so even though we feel like we should we are so habituated we do not take on the effort or the energy to switch suppliers and from here we will also talk about inertia 
where the effort comes in even though we know we do not want to switch suppliers another part might be loyalty so uh, uh, uh loyalty to the supplier basically so i am so loyal to my supplier and i have been a regular customer to them since forever i do not want to switch and because of that because of my loyalty i do not switch and lastly the fourth point will be computation all of these we are going to do by relating it to the small extract so by computation we are going to say that maybe i don't know that i can save 200 by switching so or i am unable to compute that i can save 200 by switching suppliers and therefore i do not which brings me to my irrational behavior all of these get you 12 marks out of 20. for the evaluation is eight marks oopsie so evaluation errors eight marks so for evaluation we are gonna try to um uh, we are gonna basically try to say why this might be justified so we are gonna try to talk about the flip side of the coin so firstly if for evaluation three points are enough to get you eight marks and with some analysis and application for uh, for the for, uh, for the for starters we are going to talk about the time frame so we are going to say how in the short run consumption is sticky in the short run consumption is sticky and therefore we do not switch suppliers but it might be the case that in the long run we are going to understand the rationality behind switching and then we are going to switch suppliers so time frame is basically in the short run i'm not going to switch but in the long term i might switch and that justifies why i'm behaving irrationally right now for the second point we since it's it's talking about energy uh, well i made it up since it's talking about not switching suppliers maybe it's energy or oil or whatever i can say that um people might have signed contracts with it with their suppliers so i'm gonna say people might have signed up contracts with their suppliers because of which they cannot break their contract as of right now but in the long term once their contracts are done with they are going to switch suppliers so that is another point and we are going to justify it and then the third point might be the magnitude of the amount of saving that makes up for uh switching the suppliers so how we are going to go about is that um we are going to say 200 savings might not be a very high enough magnitude to um attract to change their behavior so 200 out of 200 savings might not be a good enough proportion of savings for them to completely change their suppliers because changing also incurs costs changing has costs as well um, i can't just change my suppliers just like that overnight i have to incur some transaction costs and so on so that's how you're going to justify it saving will incur some costs as well and the costs might outweigh the benefits i.e the cost might be greater than the 200 that we were going to save if we were to change suppliers and therefore they do not change the suppliers so that is what we're going to talk about in the magnitude that gets these are the three points that gets you your eight marks and then just a small conclusion of all oh, this is why the consumers do not change suppliers and might be in the long run they might might not be so that is what we're going to do this is basically it for rational decision making in unit one it's pretty straightforward whatever we learn here same stuff we talk about it over here and if you know this essay question this structure you can literally copy paste it in every single essay question about rationality because they literally give you the same questions with a different scenario so that's where your applications come in and that's it for today thank you for watching